Hi everybody, my name is Jeremy, this is Red Beans Recording, and welcome to the fourth and for now final video on getting started with Eurorack featuring our friend here, VCV Rack. In the first video, we went over the absolute basics. In the second video, we went over clocks, gates, and sequencing. In the third video, we got deep into modulation. And in this video, I want to uh, show you how we can make like a self-playing sort of ambient generative patch using all the stuff that we've learned so far. You're actually hearing a proof of concept piece that I did for this video, but we're going to be making something, you know, slightly different. Uh, we'll see how it goes. There's so many ways we can approach this. And I basically just kind of want to, you know, walk you through some of the techniques and foundational elements to making a patch like this so that you can have fun with it on your own. Everything we've learned so far will be coming into play here. So if you're new to this whole thing, go check out the other three videos and then come back and join us and we'll go from there. We're going to be walking through this step by step so you can follow along. However, I will also be making all the final patches from this series available online, so check the video description for that if you desire. With that said, let's start building our patch. I'm going to go into the library, and uh, I'm going to grab some of the stuff we're going to need to get going. That's going to be a big old mixer, the biggest one we can get. This one right here, the Stereo Mixer 16 from Hora. Do -do -do. By the way... Uh, if you don't have some of this stuff, um, you're going to want to go over to the VCV website library um, and grab what I have in my library. So here's my list of stuff. This is all free. You can go grab it by uh, installing it or subscribing in the VCV Rack library online, and then uh, you'll be able to restart your VCV Rack and get it in here. So I will be using some free stuff that um, is not part of the stock library. So make sure that you go grab this stuff if you don't have it yet. With that said, uh, let's go ahead and get a clock generator. This will be our clock generator right here, clocked. And uh, we're going to get what's called a molt. So just search for M-U-L-T and grab this one right here. We may have more of these uh, down the line, but for right now, this is going to be the one that uh, molts out our 16th note clock, which is what we're going to use for a lot of stuff. You can stack cables in here by holding down command or control and doing this, but sometimes it's nice to use a molt so you're uh, sure where things are coming from. It's just a little cleaner to, uh, to have going on. All right, so we have clock, we have audio. Let's go ahead and connect this audio output here of our mixer, six and seven into our audio interface over here. And I'm gonna go ahead and clean up my cables a little bit, a little bit more tension in the cables. There we go. <laughs> it's funny that you can do that. Okay, so we need a few things. We need something that's gonna make sound for us and we need something that's going to um, make that, you know, do the thing, meaning sequencing. So uh, let's make some decisions about what we're gonna start off with for sound. And um, I really, really like starting off with uh, a plots from Mutable Instruments. So I want you to go into your library and uh, search for P-L-A-I-T-S and grab this. Ooh, ooh, that's pretty. I know this is like a fancy version of the uh, macro oscillator, but we're gonna use the stock one right here, macro oscillator two. Okay, so this is gonna make sound for us and if we connect this to our thing, we hear that, but that's, that's not great. We're gonna be starting off with the chord mode over here, which is uh, this last one. If you right click on plots, you can go into all the different modes. We're gonna select chords. I really, really like this. It's fun fun to use um, and immediately creates a really nice soundscape for us to work with. The next thing we're gonna want is something to sequence this. So I think we're gonna be using marbles a lot. So go ahead into your library and search for marbles. This is for mutable instruments as well. It's called a random sampler. Basically what it does is it creates random triggers to trigger things like our macro oscillator here, and also can create random voltages for pitch and stuff. We're not gonna be using this for pitch. Um, we're gonna be using other things for pitch, but um, I really like the trigger system in here and it's all modulatable. So that's really, really nice. So to get this started, we need to clock our little T section over here or our time section or trigger section, which is going to be putting out the things that trigger our macro oscillator. So take the out of this molt here that's going to have our main 60th note clock and put it into the random samplers clock. Now you can see that we have a sync going on here. Sync, sync, sync. Turn the clock over here uh, up on channel one to times four, which is a 16th note clock, and turn the tempo down to, I don't know, let's say 90. Nice little, you know, unoffensively fast tempo. And let's go ahead and grab the T1 output of marbles and stick it into the trigger input of our macro oscillator. And then take the out of our macro oscillator and put it into channel one of our mixer. 
turn that down a bit. So there's a lot of different ways that the random sampler can generate the triggers. Uh, and if you right click on it, you'll get access to all of them. So if you go down here where it says T mode, we're gonna see complementary Bernoulli, clusters, drums, independent Bernoulli, dividers, three stakes, and Markov. All of these are going to do these uh, trigger chains differently. Um, these trigger, excuse me, not trigger chains, these trigger outputs differently. Basically, it's uh, different forms of randomization or uh, algorithmic generation of triggers. And so one of the things I really like about Ambient is to have events that sort of just like occur without me really having to think about them all that much. So that's what we're going to start with here. And you can already hear that we're getting this little chord out of here. If we change the timbre, we can hear some really nice little Tomber changes, and Morph is also very nice too. So what I want to do first is really dig into modulating our plots here, because this chord thing has so much going on in it. Like these little chord changes, we're not going to use that one. So we might go through that range right there, I really like that. In the previous video, we talked about how the randomized voltage could be used to sequence stuff, and that's kind of what we're going to do now. We're going to create a very long randomized sequence that changes this chord thing within a certain range. So let's go to random. Go ahead and go into your library and search for random and grab this random right here, this one, and grab yourself a scope as well. Okay, let's get this random into the scope. And we're gonna to wanna to change this to stepped. So take the shape all the way down. And now you can see we get this nice little stepped thing here. We're gonna take clock three and put it into another molt because we're gonna use this all over the place. Uh, we're gonna use everything as much as we can. This one, we're gonna turn down eventually, but leave it right there for now because we wanna like be able to work out the range for this. So take the out of this and put it into the trigger of your random. Now this random voltage change is happening in conjunction with the tempo that we've set. Okay, so we may need to, uh, yeah, we're going to, we're gonna to need to use a, uh, an attenuverter in between our random output here and our harmonics. Everything else on here has its own attenuverter, but harmonics does not. And that's the first thing we're gonna modulate. So we talked about attenuversion when it comes to, uh, when it comes to modulation in the last video. But what it's gonna do is allow us to control the range of this output. So go back into your library and search for a 10 and grab this Bifaco dual attenuverter right here. Take the output of your scope, which is the output of your random, and put it into the first channel, and then take the output of that and put it into the harmonics input of your plots. Now, nothing's happening right now because in order for this to work, we have to turn the attenuverter up. We have a couple choices here. Uh, right now we are in bipolar mode, meaning that this random voltage is going to go above and below zero, but um, we may want it to go unipolar. In that case, we hit an offset. And in offset mode, basically what happens is uh, it's unipolar now. It only goes above a certain amount. And if you think of that zero crossing line right here as the point at which this is set, then you can pick the ground point, the floor of this, and then have the modulation go above that. So let's try that out. Um, now that we have this, let's turn our attenuverter up and turn it up until it hits where we want it to go. Meaning, listen to the chord change and only let it go as high as you want. Okay, cool. So it sounds like we have our range dialed in. So now let's take this clock and turn it down a lot to like negative 16. Maybe negative eight. So now every time this little clock hits, we'll change chords. So we've now automatically created sort of a sequence out of our modulation, which is really nice. I know this doesn't sound like much right now, but this is what we do. We lay the groundwork for the patch. We create what I call the topology of the patch. And that's what we're doing right now. We're making sort of the topology of the sounds and modulation. So I also want to mess with this stuff a little bit. I really like 
that range right there. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna grab a tides. So right click, tides. This is uh, the title modulator. Uh, let's go ahead and organize this a little bit. Um, this is going really fast right now, but uh, we're going to clock it and we're also going to turn down the, uh, the speed. So take that 16th note clock and put it into the clock. Take the scope here and make a couple more so you can see what's going on with tides. And I think what we're gonna do in terms of organization here is every row is gonna have like one full voice uh, and full thing because that way it'll be a little bit more easy to keep in mind what's going on. So take the outputs of this and put it into your four, uh, four inputs of your scope here. And this will allow us to see what's going on. I'd probably turn the time down a bit like this. And then um, let's go ahead and take this mode thing up here and hit it until everything becomes the same wave like this. Now, turn the shift level all the way up and hit, let's see, what do we want to do? We want to turn the frequency way down, maybe even further than that. Yeah, okay, that looks pretty good. Can we go even further? All right, let's try, let's try green mode up here with frequency all the way down. I also like to take smoothness and I like to turn it up a little bit so we get that wiggle. All right, now we already have an attenuverter set up, uh, basically built into this plots module for morph, and that's what we want to mess with. I can see that this is bipolar, so uh, I'm going to have to make a decision about where I want this to be. So probably somewhere around there. Take the out out, put it into your morph control, and turn it up. So that's too much uh, wiggle. I'm going to try a different mode. Okay, so this is going too fast. Let's switch our clock out. Take it from this one to this one over here. We want this to be really, really slow. And adjust to taste. I want to hear movement. I want it to be kind of weird uh, and changing, but I don't want it to be too weird. We want to create long sweeps. Okay, cool. Uh, let's take output two of that. Uh, actually, no, output three. I like to cross patch as much as possible and put it into your timbre control and turn that up. Now, things are happening very, very not often, and that's actually what we want. That's uh, desirable. So what we're going to do now is fill in some of that space with effects. This is part of the magic of these patches is utilizing effects to really make things sound uh I don't know, really pretty. Um, so we're gonna use uh, the aux sends that we have on this to do that. So let's scroll up a little bit so we can see up here. We'll put our aux sends in our audio interface up here. An aux send is something that you send an effect out to and it comes back and uh, you can assign with these knobs, uh, you can send to it via uh, you know sending some volume to it like that. So um, let's see, uh, let's grab, go ahead and search for clouds and grab this one right here. This is clouds um, and let's get it set up and then we'll, we'll actually like, you know, make something happen with it. So take aux 1L, put it into 1L there, aux 1R, and then take the out and put it into number six input and out R into number eight input. Right click on clouds and go down to where it says wet dry, make sure that's checked and turn it all the way to wet. With a send effect, generally you want it to be completely wet. All right, so now we can see channel one. Here's our channel one over here. Let's go ahead and turn this up and come back to your clouds and right click and go to reverb, turn it up. Right click, go down to alternate mode and go to looping delay. Take the output of your first molt here, which has your 60th note clock and put it into trig. So now we've just created a clocked reverbed delay, which adds a lot of nice space to this whole thing. We want to fill in those spaces with all that atmosphere, right? We may add another uh, aux send later, but for right now, that's all we need. Okay, let's make our second voice. For our second voice, I'll go ahead and scoot this stuff over. For our second voice, we are going to uh, use rings. So right click, search for 
rings. Rings resonator. There's a really cool mode in this called disaster piece, and we're gonna be using that with a filter. So right click on rings. Actually, don't right click on rings yet. <laughs> we need to tune rings because unfortunately rings um, uh, in this thing is not tuned properly. So let's connect it. Take the odd out, put it into your next channel on the mixer. Let's take even out and put it onto there. And uh, pan these out like so. We don't wanna go all the way because the stereo image of this is very, very large. Okay, I want you to grab for right now this other trigger input, uh, T3 from uh, your random sampler and put it into strum. Sounds like a uh, little wood, doesn't it? Hit the uh, polyphony button on rings until it is red, like so. And hit this resonator type until it's orange. Take the frequency knob and turn it up to around 31.5. Uh, you can always type it into. Okay, right click on this and go to disaster piece, disastrous piece. Okay, I actually reset the frequency. It seems like in this, it's actually in tune. I'm not really sure what's up with that. You can hear this is uh, not dissimilar to what we had from the chords over here, but um, this has uh, got a built-in long boy going on there. So let's get this set up. This is hitting too often, this strum right here. So how can we make this hit less often? Well, um, we're gonna use, go ahead and right click and look for gate. And I want you to grab this eight by eight gate sequencer. It's a little overkill for this, but it'll work. All right, so uh, in the sequencer thing, we went over what this does. It's gonna send out our gates into the strum input here, but we need to uh, trigger this going forward. So let's use clock two here um, in a way that will make this go. Actually, you know what? Let's take another molt out here from this, this really slow one. This is just gonna be like super slow. And we can put one of these on like for right now, just go ahead and fill this up because we want to hear what we're doing and then we will uh, we'll, we'll adjust that gate. So take the trigger out, put it into here and turn the dampening all the way up. Not all the way, maybe right there. Not that big swell. Isn't that pretty? Okay. Come up here to this setup and uh, I want you to grab the random, hit, click on it and hit control D to duplicate or option D and duplicate the dual attenuverter as well. We're reproducing what we did up here. We're gonna use that clock out from the second molt and put it into the trig. And we are going to take the output of this and put it into our attenuverter. And I want you to take the out of this and put it into structure. Now, technically, we actually don't need to do that. Actually, ditch that attenuverter. We don't need to do that. Take the output of this and put it right into structure since we have an attenuverter built in here. So now every time that same clock that's changing our chord over here happens, it'll change it down here as well. Just adjust this to taste. I really like that. I'm gonna remove every other one here from our gate sequencer. Now, I want to put a filter on this. It's a little big and bright and we don't really have the control over the, actually I'm gonna put these back so we can hear it. We don't really have the control over the tomber like we do. We can change this, but it's not really the same. I want you to take out two from your title modulator and put it into brightness. Turn that up a little bit. Just a little bit. You want to give us some movement. We're gonna really make use of tides. Okay, cool. Now let's get a filter after this. There's a really, oop, that's a little too much. Just a tiny 
bit of movement there. Uh, go ahead and right click and search for filter. And I want you to grab a feline. Meow, meow. Take the outputs of Resonator, detach them from the mixer and put them into feline. Take the outputs of feline, put them back to where you had this. This is a stereo filter. See how mellow that gets? Let's modulate feline a bit. Right click, LFO, grab a regular LFO, this one, put it next to feline, put sine wave into, let's see, where is it? It is frequency modulation, this one. Now turn that way down in frequency. I want this to be really mellow. Come up to your mixer and turn up these aux sends for your channels two and three. And get some of that wonderful sound from our clouds. All right, now we can take those gates off. We want to create a lot of space here. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with that already, but this wouldn't be a, a good ambient piece if we didn't uh, put rings in here as well. So let's take this little friend, scoot it on over here. Um, and let's go ahead and uh, add our next voice. So right click. I know we already used rings, but I'm talking about rings in uh, string mode because rings in string mode is wonderful. Grab yourself another resonator. And let's go ahead and take T3 out, put it into strum. Odd out into here, even out into here, and pan those same amount as we did last time. Come down here and change the polyphony to red and the resonator type to orange. Now let's tune this. Basically, since all of these are not receiving pitch right now, and we can actually fix this here, let's do this. Right click, grab a quant. Change it to only put out that C right there. Grab another molt, take the out, put it into here. Now put this into all your one volt per octave inputs. Now tune this so it's in tune. Oh God, we have to tune both of these. Okay, 35.5 for both of our resonators. Go right click on the frequency and change them both to 35.5. Sorry about that. I don't know why there's a tuning discrepancy between um, the modules in here. I really shouldn't be that way, but no, here we are. This is how I tune oscillators, by the way. I send out one single note and I put it to everything so that I make sure they're all agreeing on what that note is. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the uh, aux send up here for rings. Okay. Let's go ahead and create a little melody for our friend here, all right? So right click, search for SEQ, and I want you to grab this one. This one's really, really fun. Boop. Go ahead and right click and add another quantizer. Right click and add a attenuator. For right now, remove all the notes from here, except for C, just like we did up here. Take the volt per octave out of this. Immediately here, go out of tune. I grabbed the wrong thing. There we go. Take the output of this quantizer, put it into your attenuator, take the output of this and put it in the volt per octave. 
take the output of your CV1 for this uh, sequencer and put it in Bolt Proactive here. Now draw a little pattern like that. Okay, we need to make this sequencer go forward. So why don't we take this T3 output right here and put it into the step like that. Now every single time this steps, it'll go forward. I set this up wrong. Volt per octave. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Let me show you how this works again. CV out of the sequencer uh, into the attenuverter. CV out of that into the volt per octave of our quantizer and the output of that into our volt per octave of our resonator. There we go. We, we've set this up before. This is how I quantize and manipulate pitches coming from non-quantized sources like this thing right here. All right. So next we need to figure out how we're gonna strum our resonator. Um, separating your gates from your, uh, your events, meaning separating your node events, these pitch changes, from your gate events, um, meaning the things that tell the resonator or whatever to happen, is one of the great joys of your Iraq. Um, and that's what we're gonna do. Uh, we just need to figure out the best way for us to do it. I think we're gonna grab another gate sequencer this one. I told you we'd be doing this all on different levels, so I guess we'll do that. Here's our next one. We'll scoot these on over. I hope that makes sense to you. Okay, so how do we get this gate sequence to go forward? Well, I want this one to have a semi-regular pattern to it. Um, how about we uh, take this last clock we have here and make this like an eighth note clock, somewhere in between all of this, right? Go ahead and duplicate your molt, take clock two, and put it into this one. Turn this up to times two, and take the out of this and put it into clock. Take the trig out of your gate sequencer and put it into strum. Okay, so let's review what we did here. We created a sequence here, and we are moving through it. Um, it's being quantized after we attenuate it. Right now we only have one note being picked. So let's go ahead and pick some more notes for this. How about C, F, G, E flat, Now, I'm gonna show you something fun. We're gonna make this a little more interesting. Scoot this stuff over at a random. This one right here. I want you to take this trig out and put it into the step of the trig input of your random here. So every single time the sequencer goes, we're picking a new random value. I want you to turn shape all the way down of the random. And I want you to right click and look for mix. And we're gonna grab the little mutable instrument mixer. Uh, it's this one right here. Boop, boop, boop. Okay. Take the output of the random, this one right here, put it into channel one of the mixer. Take the output of this thing, this uh, sequencer, remove it from the dual tenure rotor and put it into channel two and then take two out and put it into here. Now, turn these up. What we've just done is mixed this sequence with this random sequence before it goes into our quantizer and attenuverter. So now we're getting a truly uh, sort of semi-randomized melody um, that's quantized. It's really, really nice. I like it. We need to modulate our resonator here. Hear that? I really, really like fucking with structure on this. So, what should we use for that? 
and then we're going to use another Tides. So we're just going to duplicate this entire Tide setup we have here, okay? Select all three of them, duplicate, and let's go ahead and scoot this all over so we can see. Go ahead and take one out, put it into one of your scope, two out, put it into here, etc, etc. We like visualization, don't we? We're going to want to clock our title, a resonator here. Why don't we take that eighth note clock from here, our third molt, and put it into the clock for here. Immediately things slow down. Don't forget to be saving, by the way. <laughs> That looks a little fast to me, actually. Go ahead and remove the clock. We're just going to be using it unclocked. I want it to be really slow, like that. Okay, take out one, put it into the structure input of your resonator, your rings, and turn this up. Find a good po point for it. Remember, this is bipolar modulation, so... If you like it down here and you want it to go up from there, it's all good. so cool. I'm going to mess with brightness as well. I'm going to take out three here and put it into brightness. I'm going to mess with dampening as well. Turn dampening down. Take out this one. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Turn that up. Now, position here, I'll just take the last one out and modulate that as well. I really, really like this. See how we have those spots where nothing kind of happens? Why don't we mess with those? Before I do that, though, I'm going to make our gate here a little bit more... Um, what do we call it? Probabilistic. So scoot this gate sequencer over a little bit, right-click, and search for B, E, R, N, and grab this Bernoulli gate. Put it between your stuff here. Uh, we really want this to affect this strum input. So undo the strum input from this trig, um, put the trig into the inner of the Bernoulli gate, and take the out of the Bernoulli gate and put it into strum. The Bernoulli gate creates a coin flip for whether or not what's coming into it will come out input A or B. Um, so we've just made our, our strum pattern a little bit more probabilistic, which is what we're looking for here. a really nice set of topology happening here in which we can feel the shapes of this moving around. I mean, I could leave it there, honestly, but I'm going to show you a bit more. We've got all these channels up here. Let's just make this a bit more maximal. So let's go down to our uh, next row. Right-click, search for plots again. Grab our macro oscillator. Right-click, choose analog hi-hat. I want you to come back up to uh, our clocks and molts here, and I want you to grab this third molt out from our 16th note clock, come on down to your friend here, and put it into the second channel of the Bernoulli gate. Grab out A, and put it into the trig for this new friend. Take the output of this, and put it up into your next channel. It's going to get a little loud. Go ahead and 
turn that down. While we're up here, go ahead and turn the aux end for this. Now, let's go back and make this not sound like shit. First of all, turn the frequency up. Turn the harmonics all the way up. Tomber all the way up. And morph all the way down. I still think that's a bit loud, so I'm going to turn it down. I want you to right click. I want you to grab an LFO, just a regular old LFO. And I want you to take the sign out and put it into level. I want you to turn the frequency of the LFO all the way down. And I want to see what's going on here, so I'm going to grab a scope. I'm going to take that sine wave out, put it, put it into the scope, and check out what we're going on. I need to see if this is bipolar or not. There we go. So I hit the offset button on the LFO, and now it's bipolar. That means that this is going to fade in and out. That's what that level thing does. It's kind of like a little VCA thing. I want you to grab another LFO, and we're going to modulate the morph control here. So take that sine wave, put it into morph, and turn this up. Now this, I want possibly, you can go ahead and look at this as well. It's probably going to be exactly the same. Uh, I want this to be not bipolar. Go ahead and change the frequency of this to whatever you want. So this is going to control the opening and closing of our macro oscillators. Uh, Hi-hat sound. So we're giving life to everything, this sort of topology to everything. Like everything needs a feeling of movement. Okay, let's make a baseline. So come back down. I want you to duplicate a bunch of stuff that we have here. Uh, duplicate the macro oscillator, right click on it and say initialize. I want you to duplicate the random, just drag it on down, right click and say initialize. I want you to grab the quantizer and the attenuverter, duplicate them, bring them on down. Don't initialize them yet. What else do we want for this? Before we go any further, I want you to come up here and grab the run out of your clocked and put it into the reset input of both of your gate sequencers. That will reset them to be uh, beginning if we stop and start this. So run into reset. Don't ask me why I did it that way. I explained it in another video, <laughs> but it just works. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do here is we need to both trig this and get it to do pitch. So we're gonna use this slow thing uh, up here that we have. Um, actually, do we wanna use... Well, yeah, let's start up here. Well, we'll use this gate sequencer that we used for this row of stuff up here. So take trig, put it into trig. Let's we'll just get this all set up before we start moving. Um, I want you to take the output of your random, put it into your attenuverter, as so. Take the output of your attenuverter, put it into the volt per octave of your quantizer. Take the output of that and put it into the volt per octave of your macro oscillator. That same trig that you grabbed for triggering the macro oscillator, I want you to come in here and put it into trig of your random. Take the output of your macro oscillator and put it into a new channel on your mixer. I'm going to grab a scope because I'm a little unsure of what's going on right here. Ah, I know what's going on. <laughs> Turn the shape of the random all the way down. Okay, so every single time this clicks up here, this gate sequencer, we're gonna trigger our bass, which will be a bass in a second, and we're also gonna pick a new note. So I'm gonna pick some different notes for this. I'm gonna pick C, E flat, F, and A flat. And I want you to take this, oh, that's not A flat, I'm sorry turn this offset down. Oh, 
Okay, let's make this sound a bit more like a bass. Third mode on plots with everything all the way down is a very nice uh, sort of like pure bass sound. Go ahead and right click on plots and go to edit low pass gate response decay. Turn this decay up very far. Now come back up to your gate sequencer and only give yourself a thing on each starting point. I actually think we're going to run this through a Bertulli gate. So duplicate your Bernoulli gate, bring it on down, take the trig output of that gate sequencer, put it into your Bernoulli gate. Now take the out of that and put it both into trig of your random and your macro oscillator. Now we've created a baseline that will hit semi-often. The trick when I'm thinking about this stuff, not a trick, but what I like to think about when I'm making these is like, could I just sit here and listen to this? And the answer is yes, because we've created so much sort of like stuff that's sort of happening without us doing anything. It's just a real joy to check out. Let's add one more thing, because this video is getting very long. We're gonna add a little moving arpeggio sort of thing um, that comes in and out, all right? Just another level of topology. So right click, plots again. <laughs> God bless you, Amelie, and uh, everything Mutable Instruments stands for. Um, okay, so we're gonna use a strict 16th note clock for this, so you can molt this clock up here. Um, but we're going to want to create uh, a pitch sequences for this first. So right click. Let's go ahead and SEQ. Oh, you know what? Wait. Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, we're going to grab this S sequencer again. I just like it a lot. Grab the 16th note output clock here. Bring it down. Bring it down. Put it into the step. And we're gonna molt this as well. So take the next one of your molt out, come down and put it into the trigger input of your oscillator here. We're going to need our dual attenuator slash quantizer uh, buddy pals here. So select them and duplicate them. Take the CV out of one, put it into the attenuator and reset these if you like. Take the out of this and put it into the volt per octave. Take the out of that and put it into the volt per octave of here. Now we can take the out of this macro oscillator and put it up here. It's gonna be a little loud, just keep that in mind. Turn it down, give it some of that reverb. Okay. Let's make a little arpeggiator. Change your notes. Now there's a really cool way we can make this more fun. Remember how we did the addition thing up here? Let's grab this mixer and duplicate it. Take this random, duplicate that. Bring it on down. Let's make these go in order. So mixer first, random. Okay, we're gonna reproduce what we did last time. So CV into mixer, random into mixer. Out to into attenuator, out into quantizer. Go ahead, give yourself a single step. 
At the beginning of your gate sequence here, the slow one, take the out and put it into the trig of your random. So now this pattern is being superimposed with the voltage from our randomizer. I love that. Okay, now this thing is happening too often. <laughs> Meaning it's, it's persistent and I don't want it to be persistent. I want to manipulate the Tomber and Morph controls here. Come up to your Tidal Modulator, duplicate, bring it on down, and go ahead and take one, put it into Tomber, and three, and put it into Morph. Turn up your attenuators. scoot this over so we can continue the chain. So we have a couple ways to do what I'm about to do. I think a filter is going to be the best though. So right click, search for filter, and grab this VCF right here. Go ahead and disconnect the output of your macro oscillator, put it into the in, and then take the LPF out back up to your mixer up here. Listen to what happens when we turn this now. Boop. Let's turn the drive up a little bit. See how it disappears? So we want to modulate our VCF. We have another channel coming out of that tidal modulator, so why don't we grab that? Let's grab two and put it into the cutoff input. This is bipolar modulation, so it's gonna go from left to right of where we have this knob. another effect on our friend here. So take the LPF out, right click, search for plat, oh, take the out LPF of your filter, put it into plateau, take the L out, put it up here, pan all that way to the left, let's equalize these volumes, maybe to negative two point something, <laughs> just type it in. a really wonderful reverb. It just makes it a bit spacier. You can adjust to taste. So friends, thank you so much for joining me on this, uh, you know, wild ride of learning your rack and to eventually make something like this. I hope that this was useful. I know I moved very fast and I know that I didn't explain everything quite as much as I have in the other videos, but um, I'm hoping that if you go watch the other ones, if you were lost here, you'll understand a lot of what we did here because everything we've done in this video, we did previously. Um, and yeah, this is the kind of stuff that I absolutely love uh, using VCV rack for and modular in general, um, just because it's, it's it just sounds super cool. <laughs> um, so yeah, thanks for joining me in this little journey. Cool. Okay. I will put all this patch stuff up online um, and you can download it and enjoy it if you want. Um, thanks for watching. Leave a like, leave a comment, etc., etc. I hope this has been fun for you. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Jeremy. This is Red Means Recording, and I hope you have a wonderful day.